Alice was two years old at the end of January 2000. She was a perfectly normal, healthy toddler. She was mischievous, full of fun. She was just beginning to speak in long sentences and um, she delighted in telling us what she'd done every day and she delighted in bossing around her two older sisters and telling them what to do. She was a beautiful, lovely, healthy toddler. Alice's symptoms when she first became ill were very non-specific. She had a slightly raised temperature. I think she was slightly sick for a little bit. No rash and no um, photophobia, no stiff neck. None of the symptoms that I was expecting to see for meningitis. She was, like all toddlers, she was a little unwell. You know, temperatures come up and down, but nothing specific. It happened very, very quickly. Saturday morning, she had a slightly raised temperature. By Saturday afternoon, she um, the, con the temperature couldn't be controlled anymore by cowpole, so I called out our family doctor who came to visit her. Um, he examined her very thoroughly and could find nothing really wrong with her. Um, she was well enough to have tea with her sisters and go to bed. Sunday morning she was quite considerably worse and we called our family doctor again. It was his opinion that she'd had some sort of febrile convulsion during the evening and he sent us at once to King's, which is our local hospital. Um, we saw the senior house officer there straight away who thought that Alice had flu and thought that she was at the peak of her three-day temperature and that she would get better. She gave us some Dyrolite because Alice was no longer eating and sent us home again. Early Sunday evening, Alice was much worse. She was lying on the sofa and moaning. So Michael and I decided to take her back to King's. By the time we got there, she'd really slipped out of consciousness and she never recovered, she never woke up again. As soon as we got to the hospital, the registrar who saw us there thought she had meningitis. They gave her a brain scan which confirmed that diagnosis and pumped her full of antibiotics straight away. We were told that we'd caught it really early and that she should recover within seven days. Um, Michael went home, I stayed with her. She, um, during the night, one of the nurses monitoring her every sort of 30 minutes noticed that one of her pupils was slightly more dilated than the other. She was still asleep, um, which sort of indicated that she was fitting again. She had a further brain scan, which showed that her brain had now swelled and pushed down onto her spinal column. And we were told that she, basically she wouldn't recover from this, that all her organs were shutting down. Um, and she officially died on the Tuesday evening when we decided to switch off all the machines after two independent brain stem tests were done to show that she was brain dead. It's a complete shock. Complete shock. Uh, and then to, to, tell, to tell the kids was very, very hard. Um, who, they both came to the hospital to see her as well, which was very important to us. That was just complete shock. How does anyone cope with the loss of a daughter? It's devastating and it's left a big hole in our lives. Um, that doesn't get any easier or better. This is nine years on now. How we cope with it as a family is by being a family. We're surrounded by a larger, extended, loving family, which helps. And you get through it by talking to each other and being honest with each other. And if you're having a bad day, then say you're having a bad day. I think one of the most important things is that we have two uh, other daughters and one had to live for them. Yes, it's very much a case of you, you do get on with your life because you have to get on with your life, which doesn't take away from the fact that we're missing a part of our life. How do our daughters cope with it differently? They're very different people and they yeah. cope with it differently. And yes. um, yeah. One um, by talking about it all the time and one by not talking about it at all. I think one of the um, effects of pneumococcal disease is that it takes away all power from you because you lose complete control. There's nothing you can do. So one of the things to claim back that control in our lives was to set up a charitable foundation, the Alice Faith Middleman Foundation, um, to raise money and raise awareness of the disease. And we, over the years, we've managed to raise, I think, about approximately £200,000, which we've passed on to meningitis research. I'm a great believer in vaccination. The symptoms of pneumococcal disease, meningitis, are so non-specific that the only way to eradicate it is by vaccination. It's the only prevention.